Today's video is sponsored by friends of the channel, The Ridge. I never really like carrying leather wallets. Mine was always bulky and it never fit comfortably into any of my pockets. So I'd end up carrying my cash and my cards in my pockets and then I'd lose important things I needed for day to day life like my bank card. But now I use a Ridge wallet and it's been life changing. Ridge wallets are perfect for people like me who don't like to carry wallets and are at times absent minded. Ridge wallets are sleek and minimalist so they fit into any pocket comfortably but yet they still hold 12 cards plus my cash. Ridge wallets are also safe because they are equipped with RFID blocking. They also come with a lifetime warranty. Right now the Ridge is offering criminally listed viewers 10% off with free worldwide shipping and returns. Just go to ridge.com slash listed that's ridge.com slash listed and use the promo code listed at the checkout. Step up your wallet game today and help support Criminally Listed by checking out ridge.com slash listed. Number 3. Franklin Crow In early 2006, Kenneth Matthews of Moss Bluff, Florida was 58 years old. Matthews, who was a Vietnam vet, was working as an auto parts delivery man. He liked to hunt and fish but one of his greatest passions was riding his motorcycle. Sometime in late 2004, Matthews was at a biker bar and he met Frank Crow, who was a couple years younger than him. Like Matthews, Crow loved to hunt, fish, and ride his motorcycle. Matthews and Crow quickly developed a friendship. Crow had no fixed address and he would often crash at Matthews' home. Matthews treated Crow like he was a member of his family. Besides letting Crow live with him rent free, Matthews also fed him and he took him to his family's Thanksgiving in 2005. On February 19, 2006, the landlord got into Kenneth Matthews' home. He found the dead body of a man who had been beaten so severely in the face and head area that he was unrecognizable. The police had to use fingerprints to identify the body. It was the body of 58-year-old Kenneth Matthews. The police tracked down Franklin Crow and they brought him in for questioning. Crow initially denied committing the murder and he said that Matthews was probably killed by a local motorcycle gang. But the detectives found a lot of holes in Crow's story and his alibi for the time of the murder so the police kept pressing him. Crow ended up confessing to the murder. He said he had struck Matthews in the head with the handle of a sledgehammer eight times. Crow then picked up a claw tooth hammer and he hit him twice more. He dropped the handle of the sledgehammer behind Matthews' home and he threw the hammer into some woods that was near his house. The detectives asked Crow what prompted him to commit such a brutal murder. Crow explained that he was angry at Matthews because there was no toilet paper in the home. Crow said that Matthews picked up a rifle and he felt threatened so he attacked him with the handle of the sledgehammer. In July 2008, Franklin Crow pleaded guilty to second degree murder and he was sentenced to 30 years of prison. In Florida, there is no parole for people convicted of murder, but inmates can shave time off their sentences with good behavior. If Crow is a mall inmate, he can be released in 2030. He'll be 81 years old. Crow said that he believes and has accepted that he will die in prison. He is serving a sentence at the Zephyr Hills Correctional Institution in Zephyr Hills, Florida. Number 2. Robert Lyons Carroll Stream is a village in DuPage County, Illinois. In March 2008, 35-year-old Robert Lyons was living in a condo in Carroll Stream with his mother, 61-year-old Linda Bullock and Bullock's boyfriend. Lyons had moved in with his mother and her boyfriend about a year and a half earlier because he had nowhere else to live. 
Since the age of 10, Lyons showed signs of mental illness. Bullock never wanted to admit that her son's problems were that serious, so she didn't get him proper help. When Lyons was an adult, he was diagnosed with bipolar disease. Over the years, he received inpatient treatment at a psychiatric hospital. When Lyons was in his 30s, his behavior became even more erratic. He started threatening to kill his friends and family. Lyons had also gone violent with several acquaintances. This included spraying a couple of acquaintances in the face with mace. Bullock worked as a receptionist at an insurance agency. On March 8, 2008, she stayed home because she had laryngitis. At about 3.15 p.m. on that day, a neighbor called the police because they heard what they thought was a domestic disturbance. Police officers got inside the condo and on the kitchen floor, they found the dead body of 61-year-old Linda Bullock. About six hours later, 35-year-old Robert Lyons was arrested at a Hooters restaurant not far from the crime scene. Lyons admitted that he killed his mother. He said he hit her twice in the head with a bottle of cognac. When his mother fell to the floor, he picked up a kitchen knife and started stabbing her in the back. But the blade broke off, so he got another knife, and he stabbed her until the blade of the knife became too bent. In total, he stabbed her nine times. Afterward, he poured Drano, insecticide, and cleaning supplies over her body. He then went to a local bookstore, and he bought a novel. Lyons was the one who called the police and told them he was at the Hooters. Robert Lyons went to trial in September 2011, over three and a half years after the murder. The prosecution said that the murder stemmed from an argument. A few months after the murder, pop singer Avril Lavigne was going to perform in Chicago. Lyons wanted his mother to get in contact with one of her friends who had skybox seats because he wanted to go to the concert. When his mother refused to talk to her friend, he snapped and attacked her. The district attorney said that Lyons wanted to kill his mother for a while, and the concert tickets were the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. The trial lasted for about a week, and the jury deliberated for less than two hours. Robert Lyons was found guilty of first-degree murder. At his sentencing hearing in January 2012, Lyons said he had a complicated relationship with his mother. He was critical of the theory that he killed his mother over the Avril Lavigne tickets. He claimed that they did fight about it, but he had killed his mother because she had verbally abused him for years. Lyons was looking at a possible life sentence. Instead, he was sentenced to 40 years of prison without the chance of parole. His earliest release date is March 2048. He will be 75 years old. Robert Lyons is incarcerated at the Dixon Correctional Center in Dixon, Illinois. Number 1. Elroy Preston In September 1980, 25-year-old Elroy Preston was crashing with his brother, Irvin. Irvin lived in the basement of a house in North St. Louis, Missouri. 34-year-old Willie Richardson lived on the main floor of the house. Richardson had paraplegia and he was confined to a wheelchair. On the night of September 21st, 1980, Richardson's girlfriend, 43-year-old Betty Klein, came over. Elroy's girlfriend, Sherry Brown, also came over that night. Everyone, except for Sherry Brown, was drinking heavily. At some point in the evening, they ordered fried chicken and it was paid for with Elroy's money. When Richardson ate some of the chicken, Elroy became incredibly angry. They argued for a bit, 
but it seemed like cooler heads prevailed. Sometime after midnight, Richardson and Klein went to bed on the main floor. Irvin also went to bed. Elroy and his girlfriend stayed up. Elroy was still furious that Richardson had eaten some of his chicken. So at about 3 a.m., Elroy woke up Irvin, Richardson, and Klein. He had Richardson and Klein sit on the couch. He told them he was going to kill them just as soon as he got undressed. Irvin and Brown were also in the room and no one thought that Elroy was serious. But as soon as Elroy was undressed, he attacked 34-year-old Willie Richardson with a hunting knife. He stabbed him several times in the abdomen and the chest. He then slashed 43-year-old Betty Klein in the back of the neck with a knife. The cut severed her spinal cord and she died within seconds of receiving the wound. Elroy then went back and stabbed Richardson several more times. In total, he was stabbed five times and slashed seven times. Once they were dead, Elroy picked up a piece of chicken and dipped it in his victim's blood. According to the court documents, he ate the chicken with relish, all the while aiming deprecatory remarks at his stone-dead victims. After Elroy was done eating, he and Sherry Brown dragged the bodies out into an alley near the house. Then they set to work cleaning up the crime scene. The bodies were found at about 6 a.m. The police followed the trail of blood and it led them to the crime scene. Elroy was arrested for the two murders. Elroy Preston went to trial nearly two years later in July 1982. In the death of Willie Richardson, he was convicted of capital murder while he was convicted of second degree murder in the killing of Betty Klein. For the capital murder conviction, he was sentenced to death and he was sentenced to life without the chance of parole for the second degree murder conviction. Elroy claimed he didn't remember the murders. He did not think it was fair that he was condemned to death over something he couldn't even remember. Elroy's lawyer appealed, but his convictions and sentences were upheld. On death row, Elroy was known as the Chicken Man. In 1976, the United States reinstated the death penalty. Missouri executed their first prisoner after the reinstation in January 1989. Between January 1989 and December 2013, Missouri executed 70 inmates. Elroy Preston was not one of them. He was the longest serving death row inmate until he died of natural causes in December 2013 at the age of 59. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're looking for something new to watch, why not check out my new channel, Chapter Dark. Every week we have a new mystery for you to solve. In this week's video, you are trying to solve the mysterious disappearance of a young woman. Is her disappearance somehow connected to a serial killer known as the Closet Monster? You can find a link to Chapter Dark in the description box below this video. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.